You know, I've been harping on for a long time now about why Tesla has a big advantage over legacy auto when it comes to electric cars and why once legacy auto does finally start to ramp up its sales or its manufacture of electric cars, it will still likely be behind Tesla and very likely be behind Chinese EV manufacturers as well. And it all comes down to this. Hello, my friends, and welcome to the Electric Viking. My name is Sam Evans. Great to see you here on the channel. Welcome to all the new subscribers. Great to have you. Welcome back to everyone else. Now, as you know, Tesla's gross automotive margins were nearly 31% over the fourth quarter of 2021. And that is obviously industry leading gross margins for legacy auto manufacturers. As far as I can tell, if someone has found some research to prove me wrong, more than happy for you to put that in the comment section below. But as far as I can tell, no legacy automaker has ever posted gross automotive margins of nearly 31%. This is the first time in history that I can see it has ever happened. Well, it's not the first time because Tesla's been close to this previously. But anyway, for a company other than Tesla, this is the first time. Now, as many of you know, I'm a big fan of Volkswagen electric cars, and I'm a fan of Volkswagen CEO Herbert Deese. Now, Herbert Deese said this only a couple of months ago. It takes Volkswagen three times as long to build an EV as what it takes Tesla. In addition to that, it was disclosed that Volkswagen pays on average 30% more for its batteries than Tesla does. Now, in addition, if we add to that fact that Tesla has now consolidated its manufacturing lines, made them much quicker, for example, using Giga Castings, which turns 70 parts into one, that's a huge advantage for them. As far as I know, no one in Legacy Auto is currently using Giga Castings today. Seven different Chinese automakers have adopted, have made placed orders for Giga Casting machines in order to do what Tesla's doing, which I think is a fantastic move on their part. And I can't understand why no one in Legacy Auto is doing it. But the point that I'm getting to here is Tesla's cost to build an electric car are lower than anyone in Legacy Auto. Now, I don't know if in terms of comparing them to the cost for Chinese automotive companies, because realistically, most Chinese automakers are only building EVs in China. And I think that is a cost advantage. I don't think that it's possible at any time in history and ever will be for any of the legacy auto companies that are not building their cars in China to compete directly on price. I think the margins there just won't be possible because manufacturing in China simply is cheaper than manufacturing in Japan or Europe or America or anywhere else in Australia. That is just a fact. Now, currently, Tesla, fortunately for them, manufactures a huge percentage of their cars in China, nearly 50%. Now, supporting my thesis here is that Tesla disclosed what it costs for them to build an EV. Their average production cost is $36,000 US dollars for 2021. But remember, that includes the production cost of the admittedly smaller number, admittedly quite small number of Model X and Model X vehicles that they built and delivered in 2021. But by the way, this is the fourth quarter number. So Tesla did actually build and deliver a fair few more Model S and Model X for the fourth quarter than what they did for the three previous quarters. Now in Tesla's annual report, they noted that they achieved the highest operating margin across all volume OEMs in Q3 of 2021. Tesla notes that it used Q3 since that currently is the most widely reported quarter available. Most companies haven't yet reported their Q4 data. Now, information about Q4 is still coming in from most legacy companies, so it was a fair comparison from Tesla. For years, skeptics argued that Tesla could never be profitable. EVs are structurally unprofitable. Batteries are too expensive. The list goes on and on and on. They said that Tesla could only make a profit as long as they received billions of dollars in automotive credits from other car companies. Well, now Tesla is actually profitable without even those credits at all. And currently, one of the main reasons that OEMs are dragging their feet with EV adoption is the massive costs involved, not only in producing the cars, but also in ramping up production, in building the factories, in building out the production lines. Check out my video about the Altman Z score. I'll put a link in the description below to one of the big challenges facing legacy auto companies right now. Tesla says, it remained confident that innovations in manufacturing paired with purpose-built vehicles and factories 
were a viable solution to the EV production expense problem. And while clearly, as you can see from the chart, this is working. By the way, this chart comes from Inside EVs. Now, Tesla also shared that its cost, COGS, per vehicle dropped to $36,000 US dollars in Q3 of 2021, as well as Q4. Now, COGS stands for cost of goods sold and includes all costs and expenses directly related to the production of a product. It excludes things like overheads and sales and marketing, though Tesla doesn't advertise like traditional OEMs, except in China, it does a little bit of marketing, but outside of China, it does no paid marketing at all. So obviously it's saving a lot of money on that front as well. In fact, I made a video about the marketing costs of different OEMs. On average, I think it's around about $2,000 per vehicle. So it's a pretty big saving to Tesla there by not spending that money, basically relying on word of mouth or YouTube channels to do their marketing for them. Now, this is what Tesla said. We believe our current projects, including large castings, structural battery pack, 4680 cells, and many others can help us continue to minimize our product costs. The other thing I think Tesla has is scale. There is no legacy auto manufacturers making orders from battery companies like Tesla are today. I reported on the 200 gigawatt hours per year agreement Tesla made with a mystery battery company. I'm sure you probably, well, I would say you haven't heard of them before. They're from China. By the way, Volkswagen owned a 26% stake in that battery company. But anyway, I'll put a link in the description below to that company and the agreement Tesla has made with them. Agreements like that are what can help Tesla reduce its costs. By the way, lithium ion phosphate batteries are part of that agreement. And that's part of how Tesla will reduce their costs going into the future as well. Now, considering the starting prices of Tesla's current lineup in the US, the 36,000 US dollar figure does seem to be pretty good. Now, while the entry level Tesla Model 3, that's Tesla's least expensive vehicle, currently costs 45,000 US dollars, prices rise pretty quickly after that. No other new Tesla vehicle sold today has a starting price under 50,000 US dollars in the United States. The Model Y starts at 50,000 US dollars, the refreshed Model X and S start at 95,000 and 105,000 US dollars respectively. Now that said, like I mentioned before, most of Tesla's vehicle sales are Model 3s and Model Ys. And one interesting thing I've noticed recently, and I wanna ask your opinion on this. Some people buy cars as a practical tool, completely, just practicality, that's it. Some buy them as a look at me status symbol. Some do a combination of both. I think most people do a combination of both. Now, if you view a car simply as white goods, like a fridge or a microwave, then you probably buy something like a budget model Hyundai or a budget model of anything. But today, Tesla is the most profitable car company and it's clearly part of the Tesla appeal, which is electric cars are now the new, they're kind of the new cool in a way, I think. Now, personally, I went for a bike ride on my e-bike, by the way, on a mountain called Lake Mountain in Victoria yesterday. And I saw a Porsche 911 GT3, a new one up on the top of the mountain. And I looked at it and to tell you the truth, it didn't really appeal to me. Now, if it had been a Porsche Taycan or a Tesla Model S Plaid or some other kind of electric car, maybe a Hyundai Ioniq 5, I've got to say, I would have walked over to it and I would have gone, hey, that's cool. Let's check this out. But realistically, gas powered cars just don't have that appeal for me anymore. And I think they don't for a very large number of people. Now, I think one of the key reasons that people are drawn for te to Teslas right now, and we'll pay a bit of a premium on them, is not the simple practical reasons like operating costs, which are much lower, resale, which is much higher, or the fact that they're really better to be in for saving the planet. They are. I mean, there's less carbon monoxide coming out. There's Less fumes for you to drink in and give yourself cancer, which is actually what the fumes from petrol and diesel cars do. I think it's also that people see electric cars as the new iPhone or the new smartphone. They're the new thing. I think ice and gas vehicles, in my view, they're kind of like old analog cameras that use film where you've got to put it in the camera and then you've got to take it somewhere and get it developed. And to me, electric cars are the new digital cameras. And that is why people are willing to pay a bit more. But let me know if you agree with me in the comment section below. Have a great day, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.